In the late 1800s, there was much tension among European nations for control of land and peoples. There was also a spirit of nationalism, especially unsettling in the empire of Austria-Hungary. In 1867, Austria-Hungary became a dual monarchy, with the Germans and the Magyars sharing control of the rest of the country's population, which included Serbs, Croats, Slovenes, Italians, Romanians, Ukrainians, Poles, Czechs, and Slovaks. Nationalists in the neighboring country of Serbia wanted to free Austria-Hungary's South Slavic population. On June 28, 1914, a Serbian nationalist assassinated the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the throne of Austria, and his wife, Sofia. The Serbian government was blamed for their deaths. One month later, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia. Because of a series of alliances that existed in Europe at that time, various countries were pulled into war. The First World War a four and one half year long struggle that cost millions of lives and billions of dollars. And it all began with the pistol shot heard around the world, the shot that killed the Archduke Franz Ferdinand. In the late 19th century, imperialistic territorial and economic rivalries among various European nations resulted in a hardening of alliance systems and in a general armaments race, with Germany, Austria-Hungary, and Italy comprising the central powers, and Great Britain, France, and Russia, the allied powers. The Balkan Peninsula, called the powder keg of Europe because of many small wars, was a favorite field for rivalries between Austria-Hungary and Germany, two of the central powers, and Russia, an allied power. Russia was primarily interested in the Balkans because of the Turkish Straits. If these straits were closed, Russian ships would not have access to the Mediterranean Sea. But Austria-Hungary and Germany were also interested in the Balkans. By controlling this land, they could hold a position of advantage over Russia and could dominate Central Europe. Serbian nationalists wanted to free the South Slavs living in Austria-Hungary. They believed their cause would be served by the death of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria because he symbolized the tyranny so hated by the Slavic peoples. Serbian nationalists wanted to free the South Slavs living in Austria-Hungary. They believed their cause would be served by the death of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria because he symbolized the tyranny so hated by the Slavic peoples. When a secret society called Union or Death learned that Ferdinand would visit Bosnia on a tour of military inspection, they plotted his death. On June 28, 1914, Franz Ferdinand and his wife, Sofia, visited the Bosnian city of Sarajevo. As their car passed through the streets, a young man fired shots, killing Franz Ferdinand and his wife. The young man was later identified as 19-year-old Gavrilo Princip, a Bosnian Serb. The Austro-Hungarian government had no proof that Serbian officials were involved but Foreign Minister Leopold von Berchtold suspected them. On July 23, 1914, the Austrian government sent a list of demands to Serbia, giving only 48 hours for a reply. Two days later, Serbia replied to the ultimatum. Most of the demands were accepted. Serbia offered to submit the remaining issues to arbitration, but Austria-Hungary refused. On July 28, 1914, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia. On July 28, 1914, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia. Germany, an ally of Austria-Hungary, responded by declaring war on Russia on August 1st. France, an ally of Russia, began mobilizing its troops. Germany declared war against France on August 3rd. Germany sent its troops into Belgium, demanding free passage across the country. 
This violated an 1839 treaty which guaranteed Belgium's neutrality. The British government, expressly committed to defend Belgium, called upon Germany to live up to the terms of the treaty. Germany refused. Great Britain declared war against Germany. In quick succession, Austria-Hungary declared war against Russia. Serbia declared war against Germany. France and Great Britain declared war against Austria-Hungary. It was the start of a great world war. The Germans, well prepared for war, were able to overrun most of Belgium and a part of northern France by late 1914. However, Germany's chances for a quick victory were ended in September 1914 in the First Battle of the Marne in France. The French, with the help of the British, stopped the German advance. And the opposing armies settled into years of trench warfare. In February 1916, the Germans opened the Battle of Verdun in France. But the French held fast, despite enormous losses. And after months of battle, the Germans finally had to admit defeat. In 1916, the British Navy fought the German fleet in the indecisive Battle of Jutland, the greatest naval battle in the war. The Allies advanced in the Battles of the Somme in France. Germany lost more than one half million men. The Allies, more than 600,000. The Germans were able to drive the Russians back hundreds of miles in their own territory, but they were unable to win a decisive victory. The war dragged on in a bloody stalemate. In February 1917, in an effort to break the deadlock, the Germans began using unrestricted submarine warfare to sink ships carrying supplies to Britain. In this way, they hoped to starve the British out of the war. U.S. neutrality in the war had been declared by President Woodrow Wilson in 1914, when a German submarine sank the British liner Lusitania off the coast of Ireland in May 1915, killing more than 100 Americans President Wilson sent vigorous notes of protest to Germany. The Germans finally agreed to suspend unrestricted submarine activities. President Wilson had sincerely believed the United States could stay out of the war. But when the Germans renewed their submarine attacks in 1917, he felt he had but one choice. On April 2, 1917, President Wilson asked the U.S. Congress for a declaration of war against Germany, saying the world must be made safe for democracy. Four days later, he signed the war declaration. The United States was not prepared to go to war, but the country quickly mobilized its resources. Liberty bond drives were held to provide public financing of the war effort. Taxes were raised, and new ones were devised. Congress gave President Wilson broad power to control, regulate, and commandeer domestic industries, labor, natural resources, and the sale and distribution of food supplies. A draft of able-bodied men was created to man U.S. fighting forces. American troops began arriving in France in June 1917 led by General John J. Pershing. Soon, the first units of the American Expeditionary Forces were in the trenches. The entry of the United States into the war brought fresh troops and fresh supplies to the Allied effort. The Germans launched their final battles in France in 1918. At Chateau Thierry, U.S. and French troops prevented the Germans from crossing the Marne River into Paris. U.S. and French troops surrounded and captured saint Mihiel in France, a key point in the German battle lines. Then, step by step, the Germans were forced out of France's Meuse-Argonne forest in a fiercely fought battle. The Germans were defeated. Germany's Kaiser Wilhelm was forced to abdicate. On November 11, 1918, in a railroad car in France, 
representatives of the German government signed an armistice, bringing an end to the war. World War I cost more than 10 million lives and billions of dollars. 20 million people were wounded. Towns, villages, and cities were destroyed. U.S. President Woodrow Wilson called it a war to end all wars. A peace conference was held near Paris in early 1919 so that the Allied powers could draw up their terms of victory over the defeated Central Powers. The war itself and the Treaty of Versailles, which ended it, not only reshaped the map of Europe, but also changed the course of history. New borders set up as a result of the fighting created only greater displeasure and animosity, as did the harsh penalties imposed on the defeated countries. Violations of the treaty were common during the 1920s and 30s, and the League of Nations created by the Treaty of Versailles was helpless to enforce the peace. Totalitarian governments thrived on the unhappiness of the losers and the global economic depression of the time. In Germany, Italy, and Japan, that was translated into growing militarism. And finally, World War II. The first global war, which President Wilson hoped would be a war to end all wars, only led to more bloodshed. The bullet that killed Archduke Ferdinand in 1914, in the belief that his death would bring peace and satisfaction to Middle Europe, only resulted a quarter of a century later in a new war among the nations of the world, and in a most futile assassination by nationalists who considered their cause an ideal solution to the inequities of the world in the early 20th century.